the John Wall offer has come up again for the Clippers. Now, the question is, are they going to bite on it or they're going to procrastinate or are they just going to look elsewhere and try to find some other talent? Let's talk about it. So we've talked before about this situation with John Wall. John Wall is a um, point guard that I think a lot of teams might actually can utilize. I just didn't think that the Clippers would be a team that would be able to utilize his talents the most. Now, that doesn't mean that he couldn't fit with the Clippers or somehow, some way, if he was acquired by the Clippers, you know, uh, Ty Lue couldn't implement him in the offense and make him an even better player than what he probably was before. And, um, you know, that definitely can happen if if these if the trade goes through. Now, I've been talking about trades here for a while with the Clippers and now it's time to see whether the Clippers are really going to make a move because I think this is the time now to do it simply because they see where their team is. They see what they have talent wise and they're looking at the other competition. And I'm not sure the Clippers organization feel as comfortable with their roster as some other organizations do. I mean, I feel like the Clippers feel like they can upgrade, you know, and make some changes. But now I've said things before about the salary cap, things like that. All that plays into the factor. And plus, it depends on what type of player you're getting and how huge of money they're getting paid already. And their contract is that you have to make up for if they're traded from another team and acquired by you. So a lot of things like that play a factor in a situation like this. But now the Rockets are proposing a trade from what I see. And you can go on Clip Nation, Inquisitor. You can look at those and find out. Just look at them. You look at the uh, news and stuff yourself about it and read about it. But um, the Rockets are willing to or, or having an offer put on the table about the Clippers can get John Wall if they give up three veterans. And the three veterans that are offered or that's put out there, then that's a, that's a part of the notion is Serge Ibaka, Eric Bledsoe and Luke Kennard. Now, I don't know how comfortable, you know, a lot of you guys would feel with giving up that, uh, you know, that amount of, um, you know, talent for John Wall. But me personally, I don't think I will go through with it, me personally. And that's just me because I've never been a big John Wall fan, number one. And number two, um, his injuries scare me a lot. You know, he's been injured. You know, I'd say he, he was out maybe, I think, at least one or two years seemed like at one point, you know. And even with the uh, Houston Rockets, you know, he didn't play. He, he, I don't know. It's just, to me, he's just an injury-prone character type guy. I mean, and... When I think about his gameplay, I just don't really see how he could fit with the Clippers and help them win a championship. Because I never looked at John Wall as a championship caliber, you know, high IQ basketball player. I never looked at him that way. I looked at him as a highlight reel, blazing fast, get down the court, make some nice plays and, you know, make some nice passes. You know, some, you know, some uh, box office passes, you know, I would say passes like you know, pay-per-view type type stuff. You know what I'm saying? He's that type of player. He's definitely a highlight type player to me. And I've always looked at him that way. And even when he was in his prime, really playing his best on the Wizards, that's pretty much all he was. He never had a jump shot. His jump shot was always broke. It was never really reliable. And when he did hit the jump shot at times, it was in regular season games that really didn't matter. It was never in playoff games where they needed it the most. And they found themselves winning. Him and Bradley Beal really just wasn't a good fit at the time. And... You know, that's that. But if you look at his overall game, I mean, honestly, unless he's going honestly, unless if they acquire him and unless he's going to regress his game to the point where he's pretty much predominantly passing the ball and just getting to the rim at times and not really looking to score as much as he used to, as long as he doesn't have that mentality. And if, if he came on the Clippers, maybe it could work slightly, but I still don't think it would work championship wise. And me personally, I don't really think uh, Kawhi Leonard, you know, him having a hand and a say so in a lot of things as well. You know, uh, I don't think he would really approve of John Wall. I just don't. I mean, hell, if 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 
Kawhi Leonard didn't want to play with Russell Westbrook, then there's really no need to play with John Wall because Russell Westbrook is a better player than John Wall. Even though Russell Westbrook turns the ball over more and all that, but he's still a better player than John Wall. I mean, honestly, I mean, what Russell Westbrook's going to the Hall of Fame. John Wall is questionable whether he's going or me personally, I don't think he's going at all. But you could say it's questionable because he's still got, you know, um, a decent, a decent amount of years left in his career if he decides to, you know, continue playing, if he can stay healthy. So, um, but that's my point. I just don't see where he would fit in. At. And like I said, you guys may disagree, and I definitely understand that. I definitely respect your opinion and your viewpoint, as I always do. But I'm just saying, I never really saw John Wall being that type of player. And you're asking him to come on a Clippers team who had a chance to make it to the finals last year with, with, with Kawhi getting hurt, still had a chance to make the finals last year. I mean... You're asking him to come to a team that's pretty much where they need to be in regards to making that run. Now, I will say this. I don't think the Clippers should give up three veterans like that. Serge Ibaka, I mean, like I saw him last night. You know, I was watching him um, against the Kings last night. He looked pretty He looked pretty good. He looked like he's starting to, you know, round in the shape a little bit more and more and more, you know. So it's going to take game by game with him. And I'd say within a month's time, if he could stay healthy, you know, a month or two, I would say he definitely will be right where he was, you know, or close to where he was possibly you know if they give him if they give him a chance and an opportunity and don't let Hardenstein and the rest of the you know Zuba get more of the minutes which I understand I understand if Ty Lue's gonna do that because they're a lot younger and you know what I'm saying they had way less injuries than Serge Ibaka and they're trying to conserve you know Serge Ibaka for playoffs if they do decide to keep him if they don't trade him or something like that because his, that's where his value comes in more when he's in playoff games you know he definitely plays better in the playoffs and he's always had you know good seasons as well but he definitely shows his talent more in the playoffs he always pretty much has so you know I think if they try to save him for that that'd be great but I'm not sure if it would be good to let go of him possibly you know um you know Luke Kennard Eric Bledsoe now I'm not too big up on Eric Bledsoe either so that would be okay if they decide to do that but um I feel like Luke Kennard is a big part of what they you know what what they're trying to accomplish you know and I feel like if you let go of a piece like that I feel like you're letting go of you know the a part of the core players you see what I'm saying I feel like they already did that with Patrick Beverly you let go of that part of that core that I feel like the Clippers need to get over the hump you know it's like it's going to be harder for the Clippers to win the championship this year even if they are held because when you're missing players like Patrick Beverly and, you know, uh, players like that, you know, it, it, it takes a lot away from your team because now you don't have that feistiness. You don't have that dog, that extra dog on defense when you really got to go to war in playoff games and really got to make, you know, things happen on the defensive end to win a series. You don't have that in him anymore. And like I said, what we saw from him last year against Devin Booker, I don't think the Clippers go six games with the, with the Phoenix Suns without Kawhi Leonard unless... Patrick Beverly guards Devin Booker the way he did. I mean, honestly, he literally shut Devin Booker down. So this is what I'm saying. I feel like when you give away those core type pieces like that, you're only lessening your chances of winning a championship. And I feel like even though Luke Kennard is not the best defender, probably not even the best shooter on the team but he's just one of those core guys I feel like they started this operation with kind of sorta and I feel like they should you know try to you know maybe stick with them unless they can really get somebody you know um, that really fits what they're trying to do and I think John Wall I just don't feel like he fits I mean I really don't I mean he can't shoot he can't space the floor with a jumper because he's not he doesn't have a jump shot like I said his jumper's broke and like I said the only thing he can do is penetrate to the basket and he can make some good passes passes but you know in the midst of that there's turnovers that comes with with some of those flashy passes you see what I'm saying and you know he can like I said he can slash to the basket he can move without the ball I'll give him that but at the same time this is a three-point league now so you need a point guard or somebody who can shoot the rock you know from deep and you trust him taking and making that shot when called upon this is the reason why I said I thought the Clippers would have did better this past offseason acquiring somebody like Kyle Lowry see if you let go of a Patrick Beverly and a Rajon Rondo and got a Kyle Lowry well your 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 life is good because now you got basically both of those players in one because Kyle Lowry is young young well he's not much younger but he does have a high basketball IQ he has won a championship and he has shown that he can knock down big shots when called upon and this is what I'm saying if they get John Wall if they for some reason decide to really pull the trigger and get him how is he really going to fit what they do? They were the number one three-point shooting team last year. That's what they live off of at times. So 
if you look at that in its entirety of them being a three point shooting team or because they have these shooters and all this talent around, well, where would John Wall fit in anyway? You see, because he can't shoot, he can't space the floor. And that would shrink the floor more with him on there because he's he's a liability from the three point line or 18 feet and out. And like I said, that's really not a recipe for success to me. But like I said, that's just how I see it. And that's how I look at it. But if the Clippers are going to go after somebody like John Wall, I don't think they need to give up too too much or an awfully lot to get him because, like I said, his talent to me only diminished over time. And the, like I said, I haven't really seen him play in the last couple or the last couple years. And, I, and when I did see him play, I didn't see the John Wall he was when he was on the Wizards. You know, I didn't see that. You know, and um, or like I should say, the early part of his stages when he was on the Wizards. You know, I, I haven't seen that in the last couple years. And like I said, I know he is injury prone too. So, like I said, you're trading away you'd be trading away three players three veteran players who two out of three has been relatively staying healthy for the most part until here lately i think uh luke canar went to the uh health and safety protocols but i mean what player isn't going through that anyway and um like i said you know serge Ibaka just got back just got his groove just trying to get his groove back a little bit so he can get back into the motions and the you know way of the in the flow of the game and you would trade him away with two other veterans on the team you know who are a part of the uh, uh well one of them definitely or two of them definitely is a part of the core of the team with Serge Ibaka and Luke Kennard and you're getting rid of that along with Eric Bledsoe to acquire one player who's injury prone I just don't really see how that's that that's logical and if I were the Clippers I definitely would try to see if there's other options out there something else you can do because like I said before um, I understand cap space and all that it may be an issue but you know Steve Ballmer is a billionaire so find a way to get it done because I definitely think the Clippers you know can use an upgrade in some form or facet uh, on the team somewhere and if they do get an upgrade it definitely needs to be the equivalency of what they have or better it doesn't need to uh, be a downgrade and I personally think if they got John Wall and gave up th any three players on the Clippers that that be a downgrade because like I said he's injury prone he might not even really be there when you need him to be in the playoffs and then when he is there remember he's not really a, a, a superstar player who shows up in the playoffs he's not that star type player he has his moments in the playoffs he's had moments but they never amount to anything because they he never won anything and this is what I'm saying he had Bradley Bill you know in his prime along with John Wall being in his prime you would have thought that team would have did way more especially at that era when when Derrick Rose, you know, has started having knee issues and the Bulls were going down and, you know, uh, of course, Le LeBron was in the East then. But I mean, the Wizards won't even make it like getting past the second round. You see what I'm saying? They won't even with 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 all the talent they had on that team. I think they had Otto Porter Jr. and all them players at the time back then. They had a lot of talent, but they wouldn't even get past the first or second round because John Wall couldn't shoot. And this is what I'm saying. When you can't space the floor and make your team more of a threat from the three from the perimeter, along with penetrating to the basket, it's not going to work. And it's not going to, you know, what I'm saying you're not going to win much. And like I said, he's one of those he, he's neutralized and some of the things he can do. He has a lot of limitations on offense. So, you know, or especially shooting wise anyway. And that's why I said I just don't think it'll work for the Clippers. But like I said, we'll see how the Clippers, you know, uh, see what their mindset is and what they feel if they decide to go with that offer that's out there on the table. I mean, hey, if they think it'll work, you know, hey, they're the organization. They do what they want to do. But I I definitely would advise them to you know rethink that and look at it from a perspective of can we really get what we need out this or can this help us win a championship or is this just something to put um, butts in the seats and keep the seats filled with fans coming and giving them hope that that's never going to happen of the, us winning a championship but see hey that's my take on the situation you leave any comments in the comment section let me know what you think as always and uh hey Callie out